Looking again at the sculpture, we can see in, uh, in the middle of the sculpture, you can see what's called an astrolabe. And this astrolabe is a, uh, a navigation device using the stars, so basically celestial navigation. You'll find sailors use uh, celestial navigation this day. And uh, the astrolabe itself was found in the gardens of the House of Agnes in St Dunstan's in the 1980s. The astrolabe itself, we think, was made of uh, solid gold, so it would be quite an expensive piece of work. If you look around his neck, he's wearing a lace collar, and on his, uh, his uh, arms he has lace sleeves, which is a sign of wealth in that medieval period. The lace might well have come from Bruges, as uh, Bruges lace makers were some of the best in the world. And he has uh, in his hands up here a, uh, a quarter staff, quarter the length of a pike staff, which has a thumbtack in it, which allows him to uh, walk safely on the sodden roads. If you look down here, you can also see his feet. He has uh, long, spiky toes. It's a sign of wealth in those days. The more leather you had on your toes, the more expensive your shoes. So the pointier the shoe, the richer the person. In the 1960s, you remember having uh, winkle pickers, which were again a sign of wealth originally. If you look down here, they've uh, put his name, Geoffrey Chaucer, in the sign of movable text. Geoffrey Chaucer's book was one of the first books in the English language you printed using the uh, Caxton woodcut press. And if we look at underneath, you can see the, uh, the names of, uh, or at least the faces, of local uh, worthy men who asked for their name to be placed upon the, uh, the uh, plinth. I mean, most of them, of course, you, you won't recognise, but uh, some of them are rather sort of famous locally people. There's uh, Hugo Fenwick, who owned Fenwick in Canterbury, and around the edge you can see uh, all the other faces. And then at the very back of it, you can see a uh, inscription of the names of the people inspired on it. See if you recognise any of the names. You don't have to be local. There's some quite famous people on here, including uh, Orlando Bloom and uh, other people. And also see down there the Canterbury Crest hidden uh, within the sculpture, worth of you doing a treasure hunt. That little face there is uh, Michel Piquet, who's the owner of a local restaurant here called uh, Café Saint-Pierre. And it was there, according to legend, that he taught uh, Orlando Bloom French so he could appear in a French movie. And here we see the pilgrims sitting around the uh, table enjoying their food. And here we have the, uh, the inscription of uh, who's who on the list. So let's have a, just have a quick little zoom in there. We can see Tony Den, who's uh, past the Miller. He's a local, uh, local worthy. Jonathan Ulmer, David Pratt, Hugo Fenwick, I mentioned. Uh, Frederick Spencer Cloak. Paul Roberts, who's a uh, local chap, nice chap. Uh, Orlando Bloom, you see down there, Clive Stevens. Kenneth Robert Diss. And then further on down at the very bottom, we've got uh, Michel Piquet as the cook looking down there. It's sad to say that a lot of people don't stop and look and read this stuff. And there, on the very top, they've used a part of a parchment inscription to make it look like one piece. Uh, and it's going to be run over now by somebody who can't read the sign saying no cars as they reverse right into me. Ah, oh, joy. So there's uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, as seen in Canterbury. I mean, he may have come here once, we don't know for sure, but his Canterbury tales associated with Canterbury nonetheless. So do pop in and have a look at Chaucer.